era is marked by the extensive and widespread use of technology. Everything is increasingly accelerated, especially interactions with our colleagues at work. In an age when communication takes place so quickly and by so many different means, it's easy to lose the essence of the message. We forget that communication is first and foremost a means of establishing a bond with others. Human contact that is accompanied by emotions is much more effective communication than an emotic on or emoji about our mood of the day. If communication is an art, mastering it requires a great deal of practice and patience. During an interaction between two people, the sender formulates an idea, chooses the words he or she will use, and formulates the sentences, finally transmitting his or her message to the receiver. The receiver hears the words and phrases and receives the idea transmitted, and then gives feedback on the idea received. All these steps occur in a loop until the end of the conversation. At each of these steps, a number of obstacles can come up. The idea to be conveyed may not be clear, it may be expressed in a disjointed way or with a more or less dubious choice of words. The communication may be accompanied by noise or interference or be charged with overwhelming emotions. In short, it is unfortunately common for the message to be blurred, leading to misinterpretation by the other party. The training course Communicating for Better Performance specifically addresses some of these obstacles. It names a series of key concepts, explains them, and puts them into context to make it easier to understand the events that occur daily in the workplace. It then proposes tools and strategies to improve communication between collaborators and to eliminate the time and money wasted as a result of easily avoidable misunderstandings. Among the techniques proposed, we can find active listening, which involves listening without interrupting, asking constructive questions and reformulating. Rephrasing, to make sure you understand the person you are talking to. Choosing the right type of questions, to adapt the dialogue to the context, obtain relevant information, and empower people. The feedback sandwich, a highly effective feedback technique that makes the task easier for the person giving the feedback and generally leaves a positive impression on the person receiving it. Finally, the management of emotions, particularly anger, is addressed using communication techniques such as the FBI method, which is very useful in confrontations. It involves simply naming the emotion felt, the behavior in question, and the consequences. The iMessage, a technique based on personal responsibility that minimizes the risk of anger. Hot management, which suggests using a filter when communicating emotionally at the time of difficult events, and finally. Cold management, which involves dealing with events that still generate frustration and anger. When you have to react all the same, it's best to keep a cool head and prepare the intervention carefully. To learn more about communicating for better performance, please visit our e-learning platform and catalog, as well as our training and professional services in risk management.